Now sometimes I wonder what is going to happen to our sun in several billion years when it's about to die. Is it going to expand and then swallow all the planets around it while turning into a white dwarf? Or is it going to do something else? Um, well, what else, you might ask? Let me explain. And welcome to What the Math. Now, today's goal is to explore the evolution and also the destiny of our beautiful star, the Sun. And I think we'll do it in two ways. First, let's take a look at this uh, using this simulation right here called Stellar Evolution of Our Sun. And this just shows you how the sun will change uh, with uh, with time. So after about, um, so right now it's about 4.6 billion years old. And after about uh, 10 or 11 billion years, you'll see how big it gets. So this is when it starts swallowing our, um, our planet and when a lot of the uh, rocky planets, terrestrial planets like Venus and Mercury will also be swallowed by this expanding mass. Um, now here's the thing though, once it expands to a big enough mass, right around here, maybe a little bit further, right around here, it's uh, going to actually um, be so big that at some point it will start collapsing on itself. Now it's not going to turn into a black hole because it's not massive enough and it's not going to become a neutron star because it's once again not massive enough. It's also not going to be a supernova. It is going to be an, a little nova, Just it's actually just called nova. Essentially what will, what will happen is it's going to throw out its outer shell into the outer space and uh, this will probably push out some of the planets uh, that are still around to the outskirts as well, and then it will just become a, a tiny remaining, uh, I guess you can call it a remnant, that's what it's called here, and this will be a white dwarf. Unfortunately, it's not well simulated in this game, uh, because I think there is, it used to be simulated really well, but they kind of changed it a little bit, so it kind of bugs out now, but this will be a white dwarf and will look uh, a little bit smaller, actually much, much smaller than this, it's going to be way smaller, and I may want to actually fix the mass. Much, much smaller, much, much hotter, and also uh, a, a lot more white. So that's one possibility, but this will ha occur ab about 5.5 um, 5 or even 6 billion years after today. So that's a long time to go. Will anything else happen by then? Well, yes. Yes, it will. And what we've discovered in 2012 is that it is now confirmed that around 3.45 billion years after, you know, today, essentially uh, almost 2 billion years before the sun um, becomes a white dwarf, we will actually encounter another galaxy. We will actually be, uh, not we, but our, our galaxy, the Milky Way, will actually collapse and smack into uh, another galaxy called Andromeda, much bigger, much more massive galaxy. Andromeda. Uh, Milky Way is about half the size and half of the mass of Andromeda. It also has a lot less stars in it. And so it's kind of like our bigger brother or sister hitting us in the face. Maybe not the best analogy, especially if that's your real life problem, but here's what it might look like. So imagine that this right here is the Milky Way and this right here is Andromeda. Um, their masses here are actually comparable, so I may want to keep it the same just for the sakes of simulation. So this is what will happen. Look at this beautiful event as it occurs in real time sort of thing. This is of course in th four million years per second, so it's not going to be that fast. It's going to be much, much slower. And this will happen approximately um, four-ish billion years from now on. So a lot of the stars will actually, um, they'll come really close to each other. They'll even possibly collapse into one another. But uh, the most important is that eventually it's very likely that this galaxy will um, become one. So our black holes will most likely combine and become cr or create one really, really large galaxy. So here you don't really see it that well, but there's another simulation that shows you uh, the galactic uh, collision. There's actually quite a few of them. And one of them has a really, really nice... Um, Maybe it's this one. Let's see if it's this one. One of them has a really, really nice uh, kind of a new galaxy that it creates after a while. You can see that uh, right here, a lot of the stars just kind of get sucked into it. 
And uh, especially if one of the galaxies is much more massive and they have a much more massive black hole in the center, in that case, it's very likely that this galaxy will be the new major galaxy. In other words, Andromeda is about 20, uh, not Andromeda itself, but the, the black hole in the center of Andromeda is about 23 times more massive than, um, than the black hole in, in, in the center of our galaxy. And because of that, uh, it's very likely that Andromeda is going to win that kind of a battle and will become the new center of these two galaxies. So Milky Way will be gone and Andromeda will be a much bigger galaxy. So let's look at the, this, uh, this particular simulation because that's actually in high resolution. So this one looks a lot more beautiful and we'll actually even come closer just to, so you can see this again. This Look at this gorgeousness. So this is what will occur and every speck that you see is actually a little star. Uh, now interestingly, um, if you do a little bit of calculations here, if you do a little bit of probability, uh, the chance of our sun smacking into another star is actually relatively low. It's not that high. Um, and the reason for that is because when you think about it, uh, when, uh, in one of the previous videos, I showed you how far away the closest star is from the sun. Alpha Centauri is about four something, four and a half light years away from our sun. And that's, that, can, that can actually be compared to putting a, a ping pong ball or a table tennis ball on, on, a, on a really, really, really long road that is about 1,100 kilometers long or about uh, 800 miles long. And essentially that one ping pong ball is our sun and on the other end of that road is going to be a little, little uh, tiny marble that is going to be the uh, Alpha Centauri. And that's how far away our two stars are. So, okay, nothing happened here. I'm really disappointed that I'm, I, I am unable to create a new galaxy. Let's try it again here. Let's try it with these two guys. These are these guys are a little bit farther away and they're a little bit more flat toward each other. So let's see if this works. And so um, the actual distance is the reason why if we actually pass by uh, or if our sun passes by many, many stars in Andromeda galaxy, it's very unlikely that there will be any collision. Now, it also depends on the amount of stars that we pass. So I did a little bit of uh, number crunching and using probability found that um, when or if we actually pass around a million stars, like for example, if right now we're passing about a million stars, the chance of hitting at least one is about 15, 15%. So it, it's already relatively high. Anywhere below a million is not really a problem, but if we pass at least a million stars, the chance increases to about 15. Now, if we, if we actually pass 10 million stars, the chance will be 98% that we'll hit at least one of them. In other words, there's a very, very, very high chance that our sun may actually smack into something and disappear even before it becomes the white dwarf. Now, this actually worked really well. So you can see now that we have somewhere in the center one uh, black hole that's about two times the mass of the previous a black hole. So there used to be two, now there's just one. And this is creating a very, very beautiful sort of a disc-shaped galaxy that's twice as big as the previous galaxy. Now here, um, there probably weren't too many collisions. Uh, like I said, it's the chance of collisions per star is very low. And the galaxies that we can observe right now that are kind of colliding into each other, specifically there are two uh, that are well known. Uh, one of them is called or actually two of them are called mice galaxies because they create this really long tail uh, due to their collision. And this tail is actually due to a phenomenon called galactic uh, tidal powers or galactic tide. And this galactic tide is the result of, um, well, really it's the result of uh, a black hole and uh, galaxy being so large in comparison. So uh, the side that is closer to the black hole gets pulled in a lot quicker than the side that's farther away. So the side that's, that's farther away creates a kind of a tail and it's really, really beautiful. There's a picture of it that you can see right here. And so uh, uh, this is one of the galaxies that we know and we can see at least, or not at least, but maximum four different supernovas in that galaxy, which may indicate that only four stars actually smacked into each other or possibly some other reasons for the supernova uh, have occurred as well. But if there were more collisions, we would see a lot more supernovas, we would see a lot more disturbances in them.
And here's another picture of another two different galaxies. This is about 80 million light years away from us, so it's pretty far actually. And these two galaxies show you uh, the initial process of, of the uh, combining process, basically, when they're about to join in. So this is what's very likely to occur to um, Milky Way and Andromeda. And Milky Way is about uh, 2.5 million light years away from Andromeda. But we're actually flying toward it, or it's flying toward us, depending on what perspective you want to take at a speed of about 200 kilometers per second. So after about uh, 3.5-ish billion years, we will have this. Uh, they'll combine and they'll make this beautiful pancake, I guess, or whatever the shape is. And at the center, we'll have a super massive, ultra massive black hole that we can't even see because it's so bright. Now, the black hole in Andromeda, like I said, is actually 23 times larger than um, the Sagittarius um, Sagittarius black hole that we have. So Sagittarius A is the black hole at, at the center of our um, our galaxy. So I'm going to put it right here just for fun. And uh, the black hole that Andromeda has is about 23 times that. So we're going to put another one here. Pause the game for a second. And let's rename this. And where is it? I missed it. We're going to rename this to Andromeda. I'll just see what happens for fun. Um, and also make this a little bit more massive. So this here, I'm looking at their own black hole. This here is going to be called Andromeda. And this is going to be about 23 times massive. So multiply this by 23. It's about one extra zero here, one extra zero, and then make this a one. So it's about this big. Uh, and action. So let's see what happens. I'm kind of curious if they're actually going to go inside this other galaxy or if, they, if, if they're going to start flying around here. And um, so, oh, look at that. They actually are being pulled in. Uh, and so when these two black holes join in, they will um, they will essentially uh, create this super ultra massive black hole as well. Okay, the first black hole went in and the second black hole is about to go in as well, I think. Now, the other thing that may actually happen when uh, the collision occurs, um, there's a, about a 12% chance that our solar system, our sun and everything else in it, may be thrown out. Kind of like, okay, we don't really have anything thrown out here, but in the previous simulation um, where we collided these guys, we had a bunch of stuff being thrown out into the outer universe like for example you'll see a chunk of stars flying right here there you go there's a bunch of chunks flying so this is me uh, this actually may occur to our sun as well it might leave uh, the galaxy and just fly into the outer space uh, the thing is it's not going to do anything though it, we don't really depend on the black hole for anything the only thing that it does to us is it creates a very 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 minor tide so minor in fact that the tide itself is uh, about it's basically it's the size of an atom. The movement is the size of an atom. So you know that moons create tide on Earth, and I think the the biggest tide we have is in Canada, uh, on the east coast. Uh, it's a it's called it's a place called Bay of Fundi or Fundi. I forget what how to pronounce it. But in in that bay, the tide is about like 12 meters or something, or uh, it's it's about 36 feet. Uh, the tide that you get from our black hole is an atom size. It's size of an atom. It's like a picometer so super tiny so that's the only thing we get from it we don't really need it it's not required for our existence but as you can see here there's really nothing that's left uh, galaxies have been destroyed and we only have this tiny flying black hole surrounded by a few remaining stars and the other bad news I have is that there's also a very likely chance or it's actually almost 100% certain that uh, by the time that this collision occurs uh, the actual, let's actually look at this from, from the perspective of a black hole. The actual um, sun uh, will will have heated up our, our planet so much that it's going to be ridiculously hot. Nothing will most likely survive on it, so it's very likely there will be no life left on Earth by the time this occurs. In other words, all of us will be gone. But nevertheless, I think it's going to be a pretty cool event and hopefully our ancestors will still be around living on some other planet somewhere else, possibly even manipulating stars and even galaxies just to see what it's like 
and the beauty that it's going to create. Now, there's actually even a name for this new galaxy. Some people call it Milk Dromeda, combination of Milky Way and Andromeda, and I think it's pretty funny. But this Milk Dromeda, which unfortunately didn't work here again, but I think in this simulation right here, it does work. Uh, the Milk Dromeda will, of course, become a super ultra massive. Uh, galaxy and actually it's going to be the biggest galaxy in the cluster of galaxies where we are, we are right now um, which means that we might even absorb more galaxies afterwards and create a super Andromeda and let's do it again from this side right here this is so gorgeous I, I really love running these simulations because they really make you feel tiny in comparison especially when you consider that this tiny speck right there could be the Sun and imagine how small the earth is and anyway so just to summarize even though the Earth is doomed um, to be ki to be destroyed by the Sun at some point, even before that happens, it's very possible that the Sun might actually smack smack into something and uh, become a part of another galaxy by the time that it's ready to kind of finish its own life. Uh, so yes, it's very likely that Andromeda and uh, Milky Way will become one and depending on the region where Sun passes by, so if, if, it's, if it passes by on the outskirts we might be pretty good, there might not be a million stars that we need to increase the chance of collision, but if it passes by in the middle, in the center where there's quite a lot of stars, it is very likely that the Sun will eventually smack into something and thus uh, become a part of something else or maybe even turn into supernova. Either way, when this occurs, it's very likely it's going to be a very gorgeous and very beautiful event and hopefully one of the ancestors in the future takes some kind of a space selfie to commemorate this event. Anyway, enjoy this beauty and that is it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, check out some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos. And just a reminder, every Saturday I'm going to be doing Twitch and usually I do one of two games, Kerbal Space Program or Universe Sandbox 2, but it's very likely I might try something new this time. So uh, stay, in stay tuned, stay in touch, and the schedule for this Saturday will be posted in the channel description above. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, thank you for liking the videos, and thank you for all the awesome comments, you're amazing and I love you so much. And this is also awesome, look at how beautiful this is, I can't believe that we can create galaxies and combine them and destroy in this game. And before I finish, I just wanted to kind of say that, you know what, this game is amazing, it's absolutely awesome, it's probably one of the best and most fun games I've played in a really long time, even though it's technically not a game, it's more like a sandbox simulation of the universe which really is the name of the game, right? Universe Sandbox. Now, the thing is, I, I don't really usually say that, but I think these developers really deserve our support. So if you haven't bought the game yet and you've kind of considered it or you've been kind of torrenting it, like, you know, we all have done at some point, I really, really recommend that you kind of consider buying this game. It's not very expensive and developers are trying really hard to make it better and better um, with every update. And so, you know, think about it, maybe buy it. And so I'm going to post a link for this game, where to get it and where to buy it, just because I wanted to kind of help these guys out because they're absolutely awesome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and game you later. And hopefully my galaxy stays here. Because I'm going to name it What the Math. This is the What the Mathia. Hey, I have my own galaxy. Yay. Awesome. Bye bye.